everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well wherever you are and that you're subscribed to my channel if you're into that. This week's video is going to be a advice video for incoming freshmen in college. I really wanted to think back on all of the things I wish I had known before actually attending my first day of class and I figured I might as well share those things for people who are anxious or feeling overwhelmed about starting college, especially given current circumstances. So my plan for this video is to break the advice up into three separate categories. So academic advice, social advice, and then personal advice. So without hesitating, let's just get into the video. I think the biggest piece of advice I wish someone had told me before I started college is that imposter syndrome is real. Regardless of how smart you are, how many AP courses you took, college is a learning curve and I wish that I had given myself a lot more grace, especially in the first semester, just to realize that it takes time to adjust to a new learning environment and that it's completely normal to compare yourself to others and just get frustrated because you aren't performing at the same level that you were when you were in high school. But just try to limit comparing yourself to everyone else as much as you possibly can. Everyone is on their own timeline. Some people understand things better than others. College is all about learning what works for you. And so I wish that I had someone tell me that before I even went to my first day of class. <laughs> In a similar nature, I wish that I would have realized that I would have to relearn how to study once I got to college. When I was in high school, I was used to you know, studying in a very exact manner and just getting the results that I wanted every single time. But college and college curriculum is completely different to high school. And so depending on obviously your high school education or your education before college, you might have to completely change the way that you study. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Tip number three that I wish someone had told me related to academic things would be time management. I know. Time management. You might think that you've got your life perfectly planned out and that you use your planner and that you do everything on time, but college is just such a weird and unique place because all sectors of your life are kind of coming together into one location and so it can be really difficult to make sure that you're dedicating enough time to studying as well as taking time to meet people and hang out with friends or get involved with different clubs or call your family and call your friends from home. So I wish I would have known that it's completely normal to <laughs> have to get your life in order and that you're going to need to find a new way to sort of organize all the different responsibilities you will find yourself in. Even if you are the most organized person before coming to college, there's just a new set of challenges with having complete freedom. And so just recognize that you're going to have to learn how to navigate this new situation. The next piece of advice I wish I had known is just how beneficial office hours are. I think for me, I assumed that office hours were only if you had a question about the material, which is definitely true, but office hours is really just a space for you to get to know your professor, get help with either lecture material or homework problems or preparing for exams. It can also just be a space where you get potential career advice for the summers and internships or job applications or really just get life advice in general and getting to know professors beyond them speaking at you, if that makes sense. I feel like I sound illiterate right now. But I think going to office hours really helped me to connect with professors and see them as human beings rather than just my instructors. And you never know, if you consistently go to office hours, there might come a time where you need a recommendation for a grant or an internship or a job, and you can ask that professor because you have actually taken the time to build a relationship with that individual. Okay, next, I wish someone would have told me that your GPA is not the ultimate measure of your success or your intelligence for that matter. I think it's really easy to get hung up on a number, but a number can only tell so much. I mean, clearly you know that through your college applications. The numbers really don't tell the entire story of you. I think the lessons that you take away from each course are way, are way more telling and way more important than just the final grade that you get in a class. Um, but that does go to say that you should still work hard regardless. But just don't be super obsessed with having a specific GPA because you can still get amazing opportunities regardless of if you have like a good GPA or a bad GPA. And also the way that people define a good or a bad GPA is 
really it's really variable from person to person and so I don't think there's really any point in worrying excessively about what your GPA is. The final piece of academic advice I wish someone had given me before the start of college is that it's okay to change what you're interested in. I think for me I came into college thinking that I was going to be an engineer, I was going to be a chemical engineer and that was that. I was not going to change and that was that was going to be my whole experience. But I think once you start taking courses at college you realize how interesting so many different departments are and how you might want to actually study visual arts instead of engineering or you want to study policy or african-american studies or religion or spanish it's okay to change your mind it's okay to do it multiple times changing what you're interested in is much more common than you might initially think and if you're having doubts about the current department or courses that you're in you should definitely talk to your advisors because that's their whole job their whole job is to help you work through the situation in your brain and you should take advantage of that resource. I think another thing to help you maybe figure out what you're interested in if you really don't have any idea is just to take a variety of courses and areas that you think you might want to end up studying. I wish that I had used the flexibility in my schedule to my benefit when I was a freshman because once you're a sophomore, junior, and senior and you're in your departments it's a lot harder to sort of take such a wide range of courses because you do have departmentals that you have to fulfill but before you've committed to a single department I think you should just take a wide variety of courses just to gauge your interests are you more of a humanities person or a stem person you know I just think it's important to take a variety of courses to figure out what areas you actually do want to spend the rest of your time in college studying Next is social advice. This section's a little bit shorter just because of the current global pandemic. I think that there, there is going to be such a reduction in campus activity, but that doesn't mean that, that there's not gonna be anything going on. I think you're just gonna have to be a little bit more open-minded than you might have had to be if everything were normal. That sentence was so hard to put together for no reason. Okay. My first piece of social advice for incoming freshmen is that making friends is both easier and harder than you might initially think. Coming into college, there's so many people from so many different backgrounds that you're like, I don't even know where to start in terms of making friends. And I think especially in light of the pandemic, I think it's really important to recognize that you're not alone in feeling like I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to approach people. I don't know how to put myself out there. Just having an open mind and going to virtual events and just putting yourself out there is gonna be a really great way to at least start to connect with other first year students. And then hopefully one day very soon, things will return to a more normal environment where in-person gatherings can be held and you can really have that chance to sort of establish friend groups and just get to know people face to face. In that same note, my second piece of advice would be to join a club. Again, it's going to be a little bit difficult to go to events, um, and they're probably all going to be virtual if they happen at all, but joining a club is a great way to stay engaged with your larger college community while also getting to meet students from different backgrounds or majors or even parts of the world. Regardless of if your school is completely virtual or if you do have some in-person instruction, joining a club is just a really great way to sort of supplement your education in the classroom and also fill up a bit of time in your schedule. It's really nice to, you know, go to a day of class and then get to decompress with people while playing video games or baking or dancing or singing. It's really, really just a great way to give yourself a space to relax while also building amazing friendships with all class years. So I definitely recommend joining a club. Even if it's virtual right now, there will come a point where it's not virtual and it'll be really nice to have the chance to get to connect with those people face to face. My final piece of advice would be to make friends with upperclassmen. I cannot stress this enough. Upperclassmen will give you the actual tea on whatever you need to know, whether it's a specific department or professor, social issue on campus, they will tell you the real tea. And that's really important, especially now. Make friends with upperclassmen classmen so that you get to take the best courses and enjoy yourself and enjoy your four years and not put any extra stress on yourself. 
the next and final section is going to be personal advice. I wasn't really sure what to call this section, but I think personal advice is a good enough title to work with. So the first point that I wanted to make in this section is to take advantage of your resources in terms of like advisors or funding. You don't know until you ask is really, I guess the title of this section is just ask. If there's something that you wanna do, reach out to someone and ask if it's possible because oftentimes you'll be surprised how easily they'll say yes. And then that's a really great chance for you to develop as a person and also as a student. My next piece of advice would be to take care of yourself and listen to your body. I think this sort of goes back to my earlier academic point about time management, but being in college and having this complete freedom and just having to manage your own schedule can be really overwhelming and difficult at first. And so if you're not feeling great, either physically or mentally, I think it's really important to sort of take that step back and say, okay, I'm not at my best right now. I'm going to give myself some space to just decompress recharge and then I'll come back to whatever I'm working on. I think that sort of mindset is something that I had to learn by trying to push myself when I wasn't at my best and then seeing the results that I got and how unhappy I was with those results, if that makes any sense at all. So I just think it's really important to listen to your body from the beginning and you'll honestly probably save yourself time in the long run. Oh, another point I wanted to make about like taking care of yourself and listening to your body is in addition to mental health resources, College is hard, right? Even if you're not struggling academically, you might be struggling in other areas of your experience. And so don't be afraid to ask for help. It might be scary. I, I know that it can be really scary, but it's better to ask for help when you think you might need it rather than waiting until it's too late. And then you're just completely underwater and super overwhelmed and stressed out to the max. One way that you can maintain your mental health is by continuing to make an effort to stay connected with people from home. Whether that's your high school friends or your family members or your mentor that you had in high school, I think it's really important to dedicate a certain amount of time just to check in with those people, see how they're doing, and just keep up that relationship. Depending on where you will be attending college this semester or school year, you might be pretty far away from your home or your community. And so I think just, you know, giving yourself a reminder once a month to just call your mom or call your best friends from high school or email your mentor and tell them how you're doing. It's really beneficial on both ends. And it just gives you a nice opportunity to sort of take a step back from your college or just sort of escape the bubble of college, if that makes any sense. It's really, really easy to get caught up in campus life and just forget that there's other worlds outside of your campus. And I was definitely guilty of that, especially in my first semester. I just forgot to talk to my friends and my family and I wish that I had made more of an effort to check in with them and see how their experience was going rather than waiting until winter break to reunite and then just spill the tea from the past four months. In whatever way works for you, just make sure that you stay engaged with your life before college because those people aren't just going to disappear. Like, although you might not get to see your friends from high school all the time, you can FaceTime them, you can text them, you can Snapchat them, make a phone call and just check in with each other because it's really, really nice to be able to have friends both from in college and at home to talk to. <laughs> it's really important to make an effort to stay connected to those people. If you think the relationships are worthwhile, I will say that. If you, like, if you're ready to move on completely and those relationships weren't healthy, then you should also take the space for yourself to just not stay engaged with those people. My last piece of advice for this entire video is to cherish every moment. I mean, maybe this is because like I'm a memory hoarder and I just love to hold on to each second. Really important to just appreciate the small moments. I know that when I was in high school, I sort of, I was just, I was tired basically and I was ready to just move on to college and so I really did not take advantage of the small things when I was in high school you know I was really rushing my experience and looking back I wish that I had taken the time to just enjoy being a 16 year old or a 17 year old because you can't get that time back and so I've definitely made it a point in college to enjoy the small moments in whatever ways work for you for me I used to do a one second every day video 
just so I could remember me walking to class during a blizzard or, you know, staying up super late with my friends watching a movie. I really am a sentimental person, if we're being honest, but those small moments are just so nice to look back on. It's just, it's a nice way to sort of document your college experience. Just appreciate the whole experience, the whole journey of college. Freshman year flies by. Freshman year is so, so much fun because you don't really have any real responsibilities yet. You aren't committed to a department. You're really just figuring it out. You're figuring everything out. You're living on your own for the first time. You're learning how to make new friends and advocate for yourself and being in charge of what you eat and how much you sleep and when you do your homework. And it's just looking back like I miss freshman year a lot. Um, even though I'm still in college and even though I still feel like a freshman. just. Just make the most of it, is what I'm trying to say, if you can't tell. Freshman year is really special. All of college is special. And just appreciate every moment. Because before you know it, four years will be over, and you'll be a, an adult, and you'll be out of college, and you'll be like, what? Like, when did this happen? So just appreciate every moment. I really hope that this video was helpful, at least to one person. I know that when I was an incoming freshman in college, I watched hours and hours and hours of these YouTube videos because I was just so unsure of what college would be like and so I wanted to, I just wanted to ease my concerns by watching videos of people talking about their experiences. So I hope that I was able to provide some beneficial advice to at least one person. And I just wanted to close out the video by saying that college can seem really, really daunting at times, especially during the first few weeks of your first semester. Keep that in mind, it is going to feel scary or overwhelming or uncomfortable for a little bit, but just know that you will find your way, you will find your groove, you will find your people, you will find what works for you after a few weeks, and that at the end of the day, you are the one who is in control of your experience. It's not the title of the school or the campus atmosphere that determines your four years, it's your attitude towards your situation. College can seem really daunting at times, especially during your first few weeks of the semester. But just know that with a bit of time, you will find your groove, you will find what works for you, and you'll find your people, you'll find the areas that you're interested in most, and you'll really just, you'll fit in. You will find your place and your space on campus, um, and you just sort of have to fight through that first few weeks of uncomfortability and awkwardness, because it'll definitely be worth it in the long run. It's really okay if you feel overwhelmed or scared or intimidated. I promise you that there are other first year students who are in the exact same position as you. And so just know that you're not alone and that things will get easier with time. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and definitely give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Someone's cutting their grass. Why are you doing this right now?